Welcome to Total Drama The Top 100, the series where all 100 competitors in Total Drama history are competing for the grand prize of 100 million dollars. We have everyone from the mentally insane to the more mentally sound, but still mentally insane for showing up at all. In this series, every challenge will be three parts, with the first five to finish part one being safe from elimination, the first three to succeed in the second part are safe from elimination, and finally, the winning team of the third and final part wins and are safe while the losing team must lose a teammate. Also, there are six immunity idols that you can use on yourself or someone else entirely, including someone on a different team. There's also a new mechanic called the Leader Tokens. If you are able to find one of these Leader Tokens and you put it into play, your vote counts for two instead of just one. Now you may be wondering why they're called Leader Tokens. Well, every Leader starts with one and they can do whatever they want with them including passing them on to someone else or just hoarding them till the end. Maybe they can melt them down for a few extra bucks. The final new item being introduced is the Seal of Approval. If you can find a letter with the Chris seal on it, you can swap yourself or someone else onto a new team entirely. This is great for if you know you are going home, or you just want a team to become weaker. These are randomly placed around the campgrounds as well. With that being said, let's get to the teams. For Team 1 or the Flaming Cockroaches, we have the team leader, Bridget, with her teammates Mike, Scarlett, Sanders, Ripper, Harold, Bowie, Lori, Jose, and Chet. Team 2, otherwise known as Amber Scorpions, have has Sierra as their leader, with her teammates being Dawn, Ella, Dwayne, Damian, Stacy, Amy, Mary, Ennui, and finally Cody. Team 3, or the Scheming Flies, is run by Noah, with his team of Joe, Dave, Pete, Priya, Duncan, Max, Elodie, Devin, and Lindsay. Team 4, otherwise known as the Mediocre Mealworms, are ran by Beth. And her team consists of Lightning, Topher, Spud, Axel, Heather, Sugar, Carrie, Mickey, and Emma. Team 5, aka the Ravenous Spiders, are led by Lashana with her team which consists of Scott, Sky, Dwayne, Jr., Chase, DJ, Cameron, Jen, Taylor, and Blainley. One half of the cast done, did I mention this would be a long episode? Team 6, otherwise known as the Excited Ants, is run by Ezekiel, which... Good luck. And the team also has Zoe, Leonard, Tom, Z, Gwen, MK, Emma, Lorenzo, and Caleb. Team 7, otherwise known as the Drowning Mosquitoes, are led by Eva, with her team of Sam, Jasmine, Crimson, Millie, Alejandro, Julia, Jay, MacArthur, and Katie. Team 8, or the Tenacious Earwigs, is ran by Jeff, with his team of Anne Maria, Sammy, Kelly, Nichelle, Courtney, Sadie, Chuck, Ryan, and Lauren. Two teams left. Team 9 are known as the Hopping Stink Bugs, and their team leader is Justin. Their team also has Brick, Rodney, Kitty, Wayne, Owen, Dakota, who through physical therapy is able to go back to her normal sal self somehow, Brody, Stephanie, and finally Miles. The final team is known as the Silent Crickets, with their team leader Izzy. Also on their team is B, Beardo, Rocker, Raj, Tyler, Sean, Tammy, Pete, and the final contestant in all of Total Drama left, Trent. Let's get to it. As the teams arrive, Chris would tell each team leader that the teams have one hour to get ready for their first challenge and also to get into their bathing suits. On the Flaming Cockroaches, Bridget relays the news to her team and Scarlet says that it's most likely going to be a recreation of the first ever challenge done since it would be the most thematic way to start this. Bridget would say how impressed she is that Scarlet was able to figure it out that fast, but Scarlet just says it's elementary. Harold says how he can't believe he came back for another season of this, but 100 million is an amount he can't pass up. Jose says that they may as well quit now since the winner will be her. In confessional, Bowie is excited, saying how everyone else is just making themselves the bigger target. It will be easy to get them to throw themselves under the bus at this rate. On the Amber Scorpion, Sierra tells her team the news, and Mary is the first one to say that it's most likely a recreation of the first ever challenge in Total Drama history, and though she hasn't seen the show, the team is most likely to place in the top five anyway. Dwayne quickly asks what the first challenge is, to which Sierra pipes up saying that the teams must jump off the cliff into the water before pushing crates and building a hot tub, and the team who builds the best one wins. Dwayne points to the cliff they will be jumping off of and questions if it's that one, to which Sierra says it is. 
Dwayne in confessional says that he only came back for the chance for the money, he didn't want to die early. Damien is crying in confessional asking himself why he ever came back to this stupid show. The news is broken to the skimming flies and Joe quickly says that it's an easy win as long as they all jump, which they all will jump or else they can face her wrath. Duncan tells her that he's not afraid of her, to which Joe says that she's surprised they let him out of jail so quickly, and he just responds that he was let out on good behavior. That, and the producers paid his bail. Dave in Confessional says that the last time he was on the show, they made him seem like a love-obsessed lunatic, and he promises that he's here to win this time, before asking if Sky's here since he's here. Pete also gets a confessional where he says that he may be old, but he can't pass up a chance for a hundred million dollars, he'd be crazy to do that. Just as crazy as all the companies that aren't currently sponsoring the future winner. Mediocre mealworms mostly take the news well, or at least until Heather drops the bombshell of what the challenge will be, which makes Mickey freak out until Axel uses some advanced motivational speaking to get him to stop freaking out. And Axel goes to confessional and she talks about after her early boot last season, she went into motivational speaking as well as taking several leadership courses to make sure she would be ready for this season. Lightning in a confessional says that he hates Beth and that he should be the team leader. The ravenous spiders get the news that the challenge is going to be the first one again. DJ and Cameron seem disappointed by this, the rest of the team are just confused about what she's talking about, and then Scott just straight up refused to go. Lashana is upset by this, asking how Scott even knows the first challenge, and Scott replies telling her that it was the challenge in All Stars and he didn't do it then and he won't do it now. He's surprised that she doesn't remember, but then brings up that she wasn't in All Stars because they must not have considered her good enough, calling her Miss Fifth Place. Lashana would go to a confessional mad at Scott, just saying that he has no respect. Scott would also get a confessional saying how with this team, getting that money will be as easy as ever and that he'll be running it by the end of the day. Ezekiel goes to the excited ants and says that the challenge is probably going to be jumping off the cliff since he told them to get into their bathing suits and meet up with them there. Emma tells Ezekiel good job on figuring out and that this should be an easy win with their current team. Zeke in confessional says that Emma needs to respect him a little bit more since he's the actual leader here. MK also gets a confessional where she talks about how half her team are just plain idiots or losers, so she doesn't expect a ton from this team. Leonard talks about how he came back to the show to learn new spells, and Z says that with magic on their side, they can't ever lose. Gwen would approach them and burst their bubble by saying magic isn't real, which would get a hateful look from Z, and Gwen would back off before cutting to a confessional where she talks about how all her other teams in comparison were amazing compared to this one. Zoe is the final member to get a confessional, and she says that her first impressions of this team are a bit lacking, but overall it could be worse. Drowning Mosquitoes leader Eva comes to the team and tells them that they'd all better jump here if they want to stay another week. Most people are afraid of her, and agree. Julia in confessional says that this Eva chick really needs to mellow out before she brings the whole team down with her. MacArthur agrees with Eva, saying that whoever doesn't jump doesn't eat dinner tonight. Eva in confessional says that she didn't need MacArthur's help, but she does appreciate the backup and likes that someone on our team thinks the same as her. Alejandro is the final one to get a confessional and he says that he likes this team since it's mostly women so he can hold majority easily as well as the fact that he has the strongest female on his team. They should be winning plenty of challenges. Tenacious earwigs have Jeff showing, showing up and he says that they have to get into their bathing suits and go to the cliff so it's probably like a redo of the first challenge. Courtney scoffs and says how the production staff must really be running out of ideas if they're doing this one again. Lauren asks what the challenge is and Courtney explains it and she gets excited at the thought of a shark eating someone, scaring the rest of her team. Jack gets a confessional where he says how due to his team looking terrible, he will shine even brighter. Jeff also gets one where he says that he loves his current team and thinks that this is a great opportunity. On the hopping stink bugs, Justin arrives and tells them what the challenge will be and Wayne says how his team will do great before looking at Raj for confirmation before realizing that they're apart and getting sad before Brody goes to him and tells him that if he's lonely he will be his friend and Wayne accepts. Rodney gets a confessional saying that he didn't really think that Pakatoa Island really showed off his good side, so he's here now to focus on the game, not the ladies. Kitty says that Rodney should carry the crates in the second part of the challenge since he's the biggest one here, and Rodney falls in love with Kitty, saying that he will carry it to the ends of the earth, or 
whatever Rodney tries to say. Kitty in confessional says that Rodney seems like a nice guy and really team oriented. It will be a shame when he's betrayed. Finally, on Silent Crickets, Izzy shows up and says to get in their bathing suits because they're jumping off a cliff. Everyone is a bit scared of that, but Tyler assures Raj that it's no big deal, which makes him happy. Trent notices Rocker doing air guitar and asks if he plays the real thing and if he brought it here, to which Rocker says yes and pulls out his own guitar from his belongings, and Trent compliments it, saying that they should jam out sometime. Sean in Confessional says that noise is one of the things that attracts zombies, music is basically serenading them to their meal. Tyler gets a confessional as well, and he talks about how this season is for real, and he isn't messing around. He and Lindsay are back to dating and they need to win this money so that they can start their life together and also to give some to his parents as an apology for dating Lindsay despite their protests. Every team makes it to the top and they are told that the rules in this series are simple. Most challenges will be three parts, with the first part getting rid of some teams, the second part getting rid of some more teams, and usually the final two teams will be competing at the end and they will fight to avoid last place. Last team to finish has to send someone home. For the flaming cockroaches, everyone would jump, even Chet and Lori would jump. For the amber scorpions, Damien would not want to jump, saying that he can't survive that, it's not a cartoon, before watching Ella float her way down with the help of some birds. Dwayne says that he won't jump either in that case, as he knows the feeling of being alone and he doesn't want to make Damien feel that way, but in truth, he just really doesn't want to jump. Damien actually thanks Dwayne for that, and respects him a bit for that. Sadie tells Chris that if she and Katie don't switch teams, she won't jump, and Chris doesn't budge this time, keeping them on separate teams, and Sadie doesn't jump like she promised. Amy and Mary don't jump either, with Mary saying how at this height the water would feel more like concrete than water. On the scheming flies, Dave, Pete, and Elodie wouldn't jump. On mediocre mealworms, Beth and Mickey wouldn't jump, but that's when Axel would grab Mickey and jump off with him in her arms. In confessional, Axel would say that she was a lot like Mickey when she was young, weak. That's why she grew out of her childish things at the ripe age of three and began survival training. It's about time he learns how to as well. Ravenous spiders have DJ, Taylor, and Blainly not jumping to Lashana's frustration, but Scott in confessional says how this is the best set of circumstances for himself as she is digging herself into a hole. Excited Ants has everyone jump, even Lorenzo, as he wants to prove he can be just as cool as Chet was when he jumped. On the Drowning Mosquitoes, Millie, Katie, and finally Jay don't jump, and Eva says that if they lose because of them, she will let them have it, or she would have if MacArthur didn't say it first. For the Tenacious Earwigs, both Nichelle and Courtney are left to top the mountain until Nichelle says that she never has to do her own stunts, which makes Courtney want to at least be better than Nichelle, so she jumps off the cliff and succeeds while Nichelle is the only one who doesn't jump for the Tenacious Earwigs. For the Hopping Stink Bugs, only Dakota wouldn't jump as Stephanie is pretty good at convincing people to jump otherwise. And finally for the Silent Crickets, Jerry and Tammy wouldn't jump, but Trent has a moment with B as he stares down nervous where he tells B that it's perfectly safe and not to worry about it before jumping. Chris says that the Flaming Cockroaches, Mediocre Mealworms, Excited Ants, Tenacious Earwigs, and finally Hopping Stink Bugs are safe from elimination as everyone jumped or only one person didn't jump, which puts them in the top five teams. Silent Crickets win the wheelbarrows as they had the most members jump at eight. Silent Crickets are doing great as they wheel it and Tyler says that losing the first part wasn't that bad with this kind of advantage. They easily make it first and place their crates down first before being told that they win immunity, which they cheer about and go to their cabins. Drowning Mosquitoes are the second team to arrive because with Eva and Alejandro they make easy work out of the three crates they have to carry since everyone else can push the third one that is if MacArthur just doesn't pick it up. They win immunity and MacArthur points at the team behind them and says that they have immunity and they don't and it must suck to be on such a bad team until Chris tells the scheming flies they also have immunity. And Noah tells MacArthur to keep working on that speech and may work one day. Scott smiles as he realizes that his team is in the bottom two, and his team as well as the Amber Scorpions are told that they must build a hot tub and the better creation wins. It's quickly evident to everyone that Dwayne doesn't know what he's doing, so Dawn takes him to the side and does some palm readings to keep him entertained while the team works, and Ella is able to get the woodland creatures to help as well. Even with that, the ravenous spiders are doing great, which worries Scott. Dwayne tells Junior to come over and let Dawn read his poem, but Junior says that he will do it later and that he's busy working. 
Ska asks Junior if that always happens, and Junior just replies with unfortunately. When Chris comes to evaluate each hot tub, he taps on the Amber Scorpion's hot tub and it's working great, but when he goes to the ravenous spiders and presses on it, it suddenly crumbles and Scott smiles in confessional saying that he may have broken a piece of camera inside he was working on so it would crumble immediately. Scott points out that the side that was tapped was camera inside which turns the crew against him, but Cameron says that Scott probably did something to it since that's what he loves doing. Chris interrupts them and says that they could settle this at the campfire ceremony since they are the losers. The Amber Scorpions celebrate their victory while the ravenous spiders leave with forlorn faces, all except Scott, who got what he wanted from this. At the elimination ceremony, Chris tells them all that the camper to not receive a marshmallow must walk the dock of shame, board the boat of losers, and they can never come back. Ever. He then starts reading out the safe names. Jen, Sky, Junior, Chase. DJ and Lashana are safe with zero votes. Everyone else here at least got one vote. First marshmallow goes to Taylor, then Blainley, and finally the last person safe with three votes is Scott. Cameron looks shocked and is taken away onto the boat. Cameron, while leaving, says that he didn't really expect to get eliminated first, but at least he gets to be away from Scott now. His final line is hoping DJ and Lashana well. Scott says in confessional that he needed Cameron gone because he was the only one who knew of his true nature. Now that he's gone, he basically runs this team now. And with that, we have gone through the first episode, and we've revealed the biggest loser. Stay tuned for episode 2 for more drama, betrayal, and possibly even friendship next time on Total Drama, the Top 100.